Welcome back. We're about to hear from a man behind some of the world's most remarkable wildlife vision. He's worked beside the legendary Sir David Attenborough for nearly three decades. And his dramatic storytelling skills have even taken mating Aussie spiders into lounge rooms around the world. Jason Jabba Davis spoke with the head of the BBC's Natural History Unit. It looks exactly like a dried leaf. He's the man behind the lens. The great pacifier of the natural world. A wildlife guru's invisible creative genius. And the whole world is his office. It's an a ve incredibly varied job. It's the best job in the world. I absolutely love it. Dr Johnny Keeling heads the BBC's Natural History Unit, inspiring hundreds of millions of people to love the natural world and to protect its future, right beside the legendary presenter who Johnny once knew little about. Because I didn't have TV, I was sort of slightly unfamiliar with who David was, but I sort of knew roughly, you know, I knew there was this man called David Attenborough, but I hadn't watched much of, the, you know, many of his programmes. Sir so David Attenborough is due to turn 98 in May. What do you think is the secret to his longevity? Yeah, you're right. I mean, 98 is incredible, but he still has the passion and the enthusiasm and the sense of purpose, I think, is really important. And he still has that, you know, the sort of, he has the approach of a, of a sort of curious eight-year-old schoolboy. You know, he's still fascinated by everything. Childhood interests also stayed with Johnny. I loved, really, really loved spending time with animals and being outside and the adventure of all of that. He loved theatre too. I really enjoyed making people happy and, and the idea of sort of putting a story and a performance together to make people kind of really, really happy. But TV wasn't on his radar until the zoology student was given a few days research work at the BBC. 28 years on, he has 500 staff and the very best technology, still mixing heart-stopping drama and wildlife magic. Sometimes we do go to places and discover brand new species, which is remarkable in, in today's modern world. From planet Earth 1 and 2 through to 7 worlds 1 planet, what's been the biggest innovation in filming? I mean, I think the aerial filming has changed dramatically. So on Seven Worlds, we started using drones and the drones now are the size, you know, they're the size of your hand. Allowing a close and quiet bird's eye view of a life and death chase. But this penguin is exhausted. That drone filming, that perspective and seeing animal behaviour like you've never seen it. Perhaps it's not worth it after all going to places you know we took drones into caves we took them into volcanoes we took them yeah all over the world and it's that has absolutely transformed what we do while technology and expertise are essential clever storytelling is also key especially with an amorous Aussie arachnid it's a romance story if she's mated before she might kill him he will need to seduce her with care well, it's a, it's a rom-com if it's the, <laughs> there's a bit of comedy in there as well. The male could get eaten by the female. So we just wanted to make sure that's a really entertaining story for the, for the audience and really um, emotionally engaging. How is Seven Worlds One Planet brought to life in the BBC Earth experience that's on in Melbourne at the moment? It's enormous, so you feel like you're really there. The immersive experience is now down to its last three weeks in Australia. Johnny says it's emotional and extraordinary. You're sort of walking through an Attenborough documentary and you are inside the screen. A bit like Johnny's remarkable life. I got no rules, I count them.